Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Romaldi, and this is a course in floodplain management. We're going to cover the, the basics. We're going to provide a review over the next uh, four hours and give you a general overview of what it takes to become a CFM. This is the Fundamentals of Floodplain Management. Ideas. It's a review course. Now, we got to be clear, just sitting through and listening to my stories and four hours of my bad jokes is not going to assure that you're going to pass the test. You got to study. It's also based on your background, your experience. I will tell you, I have a pretty good rate with folks that sit through my class passing the test. I think I'm around 80, 81 percent. So, uh, well, let's see what else. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Well, you'll get the idea. I'm gonna, I talk fairly fast, fairly rapidly. That doesn't mean some of this stuff is not important. I'm going to try to cover a lot of stuff in a very short amount of time. So, as I said, I'm going to go through it fast. If along the way I've said something too fast or you missed something, just put your hand up, stop, and we'll review and we'll, we'll recap. I don't want you to feel like anything being brushed over only because we're trying to cover a lot of material. Because they, they teach these kind of classes in one-day format, two-day. You can even go to the FEMA one that's like a five-day class. So we're trying to condense all this into four or five. Hey, how's it, Mike? How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, you too. We're trying to condense all this into four or five short hours and then a little bit of review time tomorrow. So, as I said, please don't think that my talking fast means something's not important. So, it'll just stop me along the way. Any questions before we get started? Any overarching things that you might have on your mind? Okay. If well, not, quick question. Yeah, sure. What do you like in these books, or is this. Well, we've been, a lot of the stuff you'll see comes out of 480. I'll reference it. You don't need to have it. It's not a requirement. We're not going to go through page by page, but that's obviously the best manual you can have, the FEMA 480, for this information. And you'll see along the way everything that I cover is important stuff. Now, what you also notice, that it's maybe just touched upon one or two slides at 480, I mean on our presentation, but in 480 there's more detail. So obviously if we're talking about it, it's that important. And the idea of the, the presentation I created is to go with that manual so you get the overarching idea of what we're looking at. Okay, well, let's move forward. Uh, that's me, Mike Romaldi, Building Official at Hillsborough County, Certified Floodplain Manager, and a host of different ICC certifications that a lot of us probably also have too. I like long walks on the beach, drag racing, and puppies. Oh, sorry, I get carried away on these intros sometimes. I never know how far to go with these. What we're here to talk about is floodplain management. You'll get the idea as we go along the way, whether it's related to the building code, whether it's related to uh, municipal government, whether it's related to the private sector providing those components that we use in floodplain management, how this all ties together. So here's what we're going to cover today. In no uh, specific order in no ranking the idea of the way this is created is to give you the big picture of how this all ties together because floodplain management is like the building code like a whole host of other things you can't just say well here's one section and it stops there and here's another section because a lot of this is overarching a lot of this connects together and it's being able to understand those relationships and as you'll see throughout the day as those combine you'll get the idea of where we're going with so we're going to talk about the history of the NFIP. We're going to talk about ancillary items to floodplain management. You're going to hear, hear the term BFE a lot. Everybody know what BFE is? Well, pretty close, pretty close. Yeah, that was good. Along the way, if you don't know what it is, trust me, by 5 o'clock, 5.30 today, you will definitely know what BFE is. We're going to talk a lot about mapping because that's a really important segment of, and not just for the test, but for floodplain management. You'll see we're going to cover a lot of different areas, how they tie into mapping, how it results in reading the map, reading the flood insurance study, reading the profiles, and how that's all the important information. We're going to talk about the NFIP. That's essentially why we're here is floodplain management. Talk about elevation certificates and those overall floodplain basics that deal with everything from the technical to the sociological to the insurance side, because that all kind of ties together. See if I can bring this back here a little bit. The important things, let's raise this up so we can capture the full slide. One of the important things you'll notice is abbreviations. 
if you thought the government had a limited amount of abbreviations, please go take a look at this book. Has anybody seen this book before? They call it the Fat Book. It's about 72, something like 77 pages of abbreviations. Now, do you need to know all those for the test? No. You don't have to memorize them all, but you have to be cognizant of some of the really important ones so it, it comes to your mind immediately as to what they are. You know, NFIP is pretty straightforward, BFD is pretty straightforward, well, for some of them. But, but the idea was knowing what those abbreviations are right from the start and being able to recognize them so you're not spending time thinking, hey, where am I going? What, what is the important thing here? So I encourage you to take a look at that. Like I said, it's like 72, 77 pages last time I checked. Not something that you need to memorize, but something that you want to have a look at. So what is not floodplain management? Let's look at a few slides to tell you what is not floodplain management. That is not floodplain management. <clears throat> the idea that you have to collect 10, 12,000 sandbags to be able to protect your home. I mean, it works. It's working for him. You see, he's, you know, we, we might have a pump or something over in this corner, and we see very little water there. But can you imagine telling people in your community, telling your customers, if you're the building official telling your residents or if you're the floodplain manager, okay, here's how you protect yourself from flooding. You go out and you fill about 10 or 12,000 sandbags and you have them ready and it'll probably take you, what, two or three days to make that wall around your house. And then, of course, when the floodwaters recede, go ahead and take them down and store them until next time. That is not floodplain management. Also, it's not floodplain management if we say, hey, go buy one of those large... Uh, membrane barriers that we fill with water and use one of those. You know, spend ten, twelve thousand dollars on protecting your home with one of those. That, that's a great idea. It works. You know, you see the, looks like the four guys over here on his cell phone trying to determine what to do next. And you probably have to have a skid steer available so you can move the thing because it gets so big and heavy. But that's not floodplain management. We can't rely on drastic measures like that every time there's a flood event. Finally, this was down in our area. Avoidance. We're actually selling condominiums or we're selling townhomes saying, hey, no flood insurance needed. I mean, that's, that's where it's gotten to where people either don't understand the concepts or they're so scared now with all the flood insurance reform about the cost that the first thing they're trying to do is just trying to get out of having to pay for it or having to have it whatsoever. So, a little history. Let me see if I can get this back on. There we go. A little history. Dates are important. It's like everything else. You know, you remember when you were in grade school and your teacher said, you're going to have to memorize some dates along the way. You, know, you, you kind of found out, hey, maybe that's not really important in life. But with some of these dates, they are important. National Flood Insurance Act of 1968. What did that do? That established the National Flood Insurance Program, the NFIP. That created the Unified National Program for Floodplain Management. Does anybody know what we did before we had the NFIP? What our, our concept of floodplain management was? Yeah, we would just build structures. So if this part of the room was flooding, we're like, well, heck, let's just build a big dam here and it'll protect all those folks. We didn't think about when we built the dam here, what the secondary effects are over here. Now these people may not have a constant water supply anymore, they may have too much water, just the idea of living next to a large dam, levee, some kind of water retention feature. And then 10 years later they started the flood. So what did we do? We came over here and we built a dam. And when one of those dams failed or there were issues, we just gave those people money. We said, okay, well now they need some kind of relief, we give them federal money. That only worked for a certain amount of time, and then we ran out of places that we could build dams because as you continually rebuild and build certain structures like that, you impact larger communities, larger areas. The date is important to remember because that's when it was created. It was easy for me to remember I was born in 1968. If you weren't born in 68, you got to think up your own way to remember. 